Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. Let me tell you, I look a mess. <laughs> I look a, I look a fool. <laughs> but we gon', it's gonna be all right. I don't know what's going on with this head of mine. <laughs> I, I know what's going on. I'm trying to let it grow out, and I also need to dye it. So it's a lot going on. It look like I got one patch right here, <laughs> and then we don't know what's going on with these sides. <laughs> hey, and I look like I'm bald, <laughs> but I just got a fade. I'm gonna do a light fade the next time. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get into Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Um, this episode was really, really good. Girl, we're just gonna talk. You know, I'm a couple of days late with the review. Summer and Jordan. <laughs> Summer and Jordan, they're both crying. I think that both of their feelings are genuinely hurt. Um, I also think that the the alcohol, you know, you know, when we start to drink, girl, you know, we start crying and all that carrying on, right? Um, but even without the alcohol, I do think that their feelings are really hurt. Um, we're going to have to just call a thing a thing. Um, Jordan, y'all know Jordan is my girl. <laughs> you know, a lot of, you know, usually the girls, I, I feel like Jordan, Jordan gets a lot of hate. <laughs> online and usually the girls who I see are sometimes dis disliked the most are the ones that I go up for <laughs> I go up for Jordan <laughs> I like Jordan <laughs> oh um, Jordan is probably my favorite girl on the show you know who I'm, I I'm growing to really like there's not one person on the show I dislike but the person who I'm growing to like is Jasmine you know what? Can I just say something? It would have been, I think it would have been nice to see Jasmine come back to the house. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it and not be pregnant. She reveals to us this episode that she is indeed pregnant. Oh, girl. That she's indeed pregnant. I just think it would have been good to see how Jasmine kind of interacts with her friends now that you know her husband has been deployed um, but i just think it would have been nice to see um a part of me feels like jasmine is kind of on the the outs with the group have you have y'all took notice to that um i don't i feel like jasmine really doesn't have a friend in the house and i think that's why it's important for mariah to come so at least jasmine has someone who she feels is a friend and I'm getting ahead of myself in the review. Um, she even lets us know that when she came into the house, that the only two that she was really like kind of she knew where she stood was with Alex and with Bria. I do think part of the reason is one, Jasmine is married. We're not gonna sit here and act like when y'all get married, it doesn't change the dynamic of friendships. It just does. When people get in relationships, when people get married, things start to shift and change. I also think that. Part of them probably seeing the dynamic and really getting a insight of how Jasmine and Silas's marriage works, right? The conversations that they would have in the bedroom, things that they may not have been privy to. I think that also played a part in the distance between um, Jasmine and the group. I think it's important for Jasmine to acknowledge and also want to have a conversation and accept that girl, there may be things that happened that made them pull away from you. And I also think they need to acknowledge that girl and also have an honest conversation about why things like started to kind of pull away from Jasmine and vice versa. You see what I'm saying? Um, but I just I, I just wish it would have it would have been fun to see Jasmine in the house, not pregnant, being able to really. I wanted to see the that, that Jasmine, but <laughs> it's, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to never happen. Um, anyway, shout out to Jasmine. Jasmine had her baby. We already knew that stuff. Um, but anyway, Summer Jordan. Summer Jordan, you know, I did not hear Summer tell Jordan's business. And I think that even when Preston brought it up to Jordan, to Summer, like the next day, Summer did say, I didn't say what it was. I just said that I was there for her when she was crying. And I believe Summer. 
I also know that production, if Summer would have said it, they would have played Summer saying it. Now, one thing I will say about Summer, Summer, the reason why the why, the reason why Jordan has every right to kind of have a wall up with you is because you are that girl that on Mad Day you start to tell the T, right? You did it with Alex, right? Now you mad at Alex, and now we at the dinner table, and it's oh, you want to let everybody know Alex been inside of you, right? Now you upset. Now you upset again, and now you want to throw out there, you know, I was there with her when she was in the restroom crying just a few hours ago, right? So I can completely understand why Jordan is now kind of ap apprehensive about what she will and will not disclose to Miss Summer. Because, <laughs> girl, you get mad and, girl, you're the girl who sought to do all of this, right? Um, I, think that's, I think that Jordan needs to Take accountability and girl, your tone be a look, rah, rah, rah for me. Girl, we just talking. Girl, I don't have time to be going scene by scene. Jordan, your tone is a look too rah, rah for me, baby. Even when Jordan was telling Alex at the end, I was ready to whoop your ass. <laughs> See, this is what I be talking about. <laughs> because if Alex would have came back and said, girl, what? And if you want to put your hands on me, I would have broke your goddamn neck. It would have took it to the next level. You see what I'm saying? And then everybody would say that Alex was wrong because Jordan is a woman. You can't talk to a woman like that. But I feel like Jordan, she does say things and it can take a situation to the next level. Y'all know Phil is not my favorite person. But even last year, you know, you know, Jordan likes to, you know, she do, she's gonna do a lot of bucking. And you have to realize every Man was not ra raised the same way, and you get in a man, you get into, you do all of this, and girl want to start bucking and talking about how you gonna whoop somebody's ass. Everybody ain't Russell Wilson. Everybody ain't Barack. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm just saying, Jordan does have something going on with her delivery sometimes and her tone. And Jordan, the way that she speaks to people, it can be the cause of things escalating to the next level. Because if somebody matches her energy, then Jordan is going to go there and then they're going to go there and then it's just going to be a big, it's just going to be an explosive scene. You see what I'm saying? Um, anyways, they go to church. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a little old school, right? I'm a little old school. And there are some things that, you know, I still kind of believe in. Some things I, you know, I think I've progressed in some areas. I'm not too, like people wearing certain stuff to church doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. Um, even though I grew up in a real, like strict, like, you know, women can't show their arm. Like I went to the, one of those type of churches growing up. Like women, you can't wear pants inside of the church um you can if you're like in the cafeteria but you can't walk in the sanctuary with like pants on it had to be a skirt it needed to be to your knees or below your knees so i'm not gonna lie when i saw girl when i saw miss shanice girl walk girl, i said shanice where are you going girl girl that's, girl that skirt is for the club girl that is not for church girl Shanice had a skirt all right below her booty cheeks I don't care what nobody got to say I said girl what the hell is Shanice Shanice but, but Shanice girl but you know they say come as you are come as you are and Shanice went to church <laughs> but I did I'm not gonna lie I did look at that skirt like girl that skirt need to be about five inches longer <laughs> but that's alright girl Shanice still went to church okay so shout out to Shanice for going to church um, Noel. Noel feels some type of way because she feels as though Alex should have asked her to go to church. <laughs> ah, girl, I, you know it got to be, you know it got to be, girl. For me to be defending a nigga, <laughs> to me, Alex ain't really did nothing wrong when I really think about the way Alex has been moving this season. Now, we're going to get into Alex in a little bit because Alex, you was full of shit <laughs> at the end. But for the most part, Alex is all right in my eyes. Alex opened up that door. 
I heard him say it, and then I had to rewind it just to make sure I wasn't playing. And they also had the caption on the TV, and he said, "Y'all want." He said, y'all want to go to church. That's what he said. <laughs> What's the name? Didn't say anything. I need to call my dentist. I'm going to wait. I'm gonna, uh, oh, let me set my alarm. Hold, uh, hold on. I need to call her after this video. What time is it? Three, okay. I'm going to call her after this video. Okay. God, I be having to set alarm. Girl, you know, I'm getting old, so I have to set alarms. And I have to put everything <laughs> like in an alarm to remind me I need to do this. Girl, okay. Um. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah. <laughs> so Noel felt some type of way about Alex not inviting her to church, but the fact is he did. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't give you a personal invitation, but he said y'all, <laughs> girl, and it was you and Summer. So, hello. Anyways, um. Can I say something? I don't want to sound mean. And I think this this is this is for Noel and every other man, woman, non-binary, non-gender conforming, whomever, it doesn't matter. Noel has a lot of trauma that she has to work through. Noel is still going through the loss of a father's love, her father's love. Her father, I think, was there for a few years of her life. When he, I think the first few years of her life, I think they said two or three. I can't remember. I can't remember what she said, but he basically has not been in her life. That's what it comes down to. And she says she writes him letters and tries to get in contact with him. And he just pretty much is an ain't shit nigga. That's pretty much what it is. A nigga ain't shit. Um, I want people who want to be in relationships to start to work on themselves and to deal with any trauma that you have before trying to enter into this intimate relationship with someone. Because I feel like what happens is, is y'all have all of these issues and then you expect the person that you're now in a relationship with to help fix you or to fix you, to make you happy. Sweetie, you don't even have the recipe to make you happy. So what makes you think that this other person does? You don't even know how to make yourself happy. So what makes you think this other person, I think that it is unfair to get into a relationship and you know you have all of these things that you have not worked through, unload these things on this other person and now they have to, girl, take on what you have been going on on top of what they probably have going on too. <laughs> so now you have Noel who feels as though Alex rejecting her reminds her of her father rejecting her. I think that is unfair to even put that on Alice's shoulder. Noelle should not be trying to enter into any relationship, be cool with anybody until she works through her goddamn issues. And the simple fact that Noelle is at a pool crying about a man who she really just met five fucking days ago. Noelle needs to be in a therapist session as soon as possible. And that's not me being mean. I think we all need therapy. But you just met Alex on some real shit. And if we're going to be honest, even with Alex flirting with another woman in front of Noelle, Alex don't owe Noelle a goddamn thing. Just like Noelle don't owe Alex shit when she was out there damn near tonguing another nigga with that goddamn cupcake, girl, a few hours before Alex was flirting with a bitch at the club. So even with that being said, Noelle, you expect Alex to give you something and he doesn't owe you anything that you're not even willing to give to Alex because you were just flirting with a nigga in a swimming pool. <laughs> so how does that even work? It's unfair all the way around. 
And I think that this is one of those situations. Here I go take it up for a nigga. This is one of those situations where Alex can appear to be this bad guy based off of what these women have said. When the truth of the matter is, Alex has told y'all what the T is. Alex told y'all he in his fuckboy era and y'all still want to fuck with him. And then your feelings are hurt when he tells you, I don't want nothing to do with y'all like that. But he telling y'all what the T is. He told y'all, girl, wake up. And so Noel sitting here crying because now this nigga who I, you already know through summer has said, I'm in my fuck, fuck, fuck boy area and told you, I don't really want to deal with you like that. Alex will fuck you, Noel. But past that, he ain't trying to be all on, 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 on that shit like that. And now your feelings hurt. And now it reminds you of your father. And now you feel rejected. Baby, you... Do not need to be in no type of relationship, no time soon until you work through your goddamn issues. Can you, I think that if everybody worked through whatever trauma they have going on and then they entered into a relationship, I think it could be a beautiful thing. But when you have people who have all of this baggage, I hate to say it, and trauma, and then you enter into a relationship and then what if this person has baggage and trauma, it's just going to be a mess. You got Noel's mother basically telling her girl, stop all that crying on some real shit. And it's I, I was with Noel's mother because if we're going to be honest about it, you don't even know that man to be crying like this girl. Now, maybe this is reminding of your reminding you of your father. But girl, you just met this man five days ago. What the fuck are you crying about? And now you feel embarrassed because more than likely the producers and the group have convinced you to go talk to Alex and girl show <laughs> that you like him or this expression of love. When again, you don't even know this man. So now you feel embarrassed because I just met this man, right? And now I'm thinking of my, it just, it just was a mess. Um, that's a Jasmine reveal. She was pregnant this episode. Um, Jordan is quiet. They go out to dinner. Jordan is quiet. Alex has realized uh, that Jordan has not been very vocal as she normally is. I really think that Alex. I really think that Alex um, was genuinely concerned about Jordan. And her not and her being quiet. I do. Um, they kind of made a joke out of it. I didn't like that. Because I think that Alex was coming from a, a sincere space of concern. And everybody at the table, I'm not going to say everybody, but I feel like most of the people, they kind of just like, oh, maybe he misses your voice, man. That's like, okay. <laughs> See, this is why people don't be saying shit. Um, and then Jordan lets them know that basically her hair is falling out and she's been through a lot. And um, Alex says that in that moment, he felt like he learned more about her than he has since they met. And then Jordan, girl, I, I was like, oh, Jordan, girl. I think if Jordan would have took the route of, I got what Jordan was trying to say when she brought herself into it. Because basically, Jordan was on some, girl, you already had preconceived notions about me. You, you could have gotten to know me last season, but because you already thought that I was negative, negative and toxic, that's why now you feel as if you just got to know me. But you could have got, you could have gotten to know me last summer, but you already had these thoughts about me in your head. That's what she should have said and left it at that. She lost me when she came in and she was like, you didn't understand me because you had me fucked up <laughs> with the Shanice and I was ready to whoop your ass. Now, I don't know what Shanice got to do with what he's saying to you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then Shanice started crying. But see, this is, a, let me say this. Shanice started crying and she started talking about how um, Alex re-traumatized her. Well, in this moment, if we're going to be honest about it, it sounds like Jordan re-traumatized re uh, re you because she brought it up. Hello? 
This is why it's important to have a reunion, because I do feel like with some of this group, a lot of this group, a lot of this would not be going on if they had a reunion, because now that is the time to come together and discuss things that we didn't know each other said, talk about the show, try to come to some type of resolve. I can almost guarantee you that Jasmine would not feel as though she's on the outs if they would have had a reunion and came to and said, OK, this is what it is. Right. And then they probably could have built continued some type of friendship after the reunion. I think that with Shanice, if it was discussed at the reunion, then Shanice wouldn't be at the table breaking down. I feel like with Jordan, if she would have been able to get what she needed to get out at the reunion, it wouldn't be, oh, I was going to whoop your ass because you called me toxic last year. You see what I'm saying? Like I, that, That's why they should have had a reunion. Because now we are bringing up stuff from last season. And not to say that, because we've seen episodes of Housewives and they'll bring up some shit that happened three seasons ago. Not to say that just because there's a reunion that that means that things that happen won't be brought up again, because they definitely can and will. But I just think that it's important to have a reunion because now we have all of this tension, um, things that have not clearly been resolved, things that have not been discussed. And now we have to go back to season one. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Um, Alex, this is what Alex was on some was on some bullshit. He says that he was concerned about he was concerned about basically Shanice and he was trying to protect her. No, you wasn't. <laughs> no, you wasn't. No, you wasn't. You heard that it was some crazy ass heifer who was coming into the house, who was stalking her ex-boyfriend, and your ass was like, who the fuck they bringing into this house? Period. <laughs> and ain't shit wrong with that, because I would have been thinking the same goddamn thing. Hello? Hey! And we're going to have to call a thing a thing. If it was a man, <laughs> if it was a man who was coming into this house, and they were saying that this man had been accused of stalking his ex-girlfriend, girl, they would have been in shambles. <laughs> so I'm not mad at Alex or anybody else for having the conversation about this girl who supposedly was stalking her ex-girl boyfriend excuse me her ex-boyfriend or a nigga who she was dating or screwing I don't know what I, I can't remember the details but another thing too with Shanice though Shanice God I know you didn't think he was going to come onto this goddamn platform on Bravo and think that nobody was going to talk about what happened girl I remember Shanice before I even knew who Shanice was I remember discussing that story in Hot Topics on one of my videos. The guy from Insecure, I remember doing a Hot Topics video. I never knew who Shanice was. And so when the story came up on the show, I was like, oh my God, I talked about this story before on Hot Topics. So that's the girl. <laughs> that's the crazy bitch who was out there stalking us out there. <laughs> oh! And then <laughs> Bria. Bria, girl, <laughs> Bria is so dramatic. Girl, when Jasmine said, when Jasmine said, my mother is a brilliant, resilient, two-time convicted felon, do not try me. When I tell you, baby, the way I holler, girl, well, one, I looked at my TV. I said, what the fuck did she just say? <laughs> Did I have to rewind it, girl? Hold up. I had to rewind it. I said, what the fuck she just say? <laughs> I said, oh, she for real. <laughs> Hell, I tell you, bitch, I was screaming. Bria. Bria, girl. Bria now is upset because she found out that Jasmine purchased Mariah's ticket before she had a conversation with the house. Bria does not have an issue with Mariah. Bria has an issue with Jasmine. And because she has an issue with Jasmine, she's taking it out on Mariah. So now Mariah can't come because I don't feel safe with Mariah in the house. Girl, you don't have no issue with no goddamn Mariah. You pissed off at Jasmine. And you're pissed off at Jasmine because now you feel as though, why well, can't Phil come, but Mariah can? Girl, I don't like to downplay when people put, pe put your hands on people because putting your hands on somebody is putting your hands on somebody. But I also know that we also, we, we can't compare everything to everything. 
it's one thing to punch somebody. It's one thing to slap somebody. It's one thing to have so for somebody to have some clothes and to just kind of shove them into your chest. The way that Bria is acting is if Mariah girl hopped on top of her and punched her, dragged her down the stairs. Girl. Again, I get it. Getting into getting into someone's space is still getting into their space. But I don't think that Bria is worried about Mariah. Bria just wants to one up Jasmine. That's it. Because now Bria feels as though she has been disrespected and it's not right. And Bria, just like Preston said, Bria likes to play this game where she act like she's so hood and girl, I'm hard. Did y'all hear her say, if I don't get to say what I say, now I'm going to do a whole bunch of screaming and yelling when I get back to the house? Girl, who gives a fuck? Girl, that's what somebody should have said. Somebody, man or woman, should have said, girl, who gives a fuck? You think when you holler and scream that you're doing something. Girl, we can all holler and scream at this motherfucking type. Girl. Like, Britt is the person who thinks that she's the only one who knows how to yell and scream. Girl, we can all yell and scream. <laughs> okay? My vocal box works perfectly fine. <laughs> so you think that you yelling and screaming, don't, girl, don't do, don't move somebody. But I can almost guarantee you my voice can work better than yours. <laughs> and that's Bria's problem. Bria thinks that Bria think that she gonna like, she gonna punk somebody. Girl. Girl, me and Bria been got into it. <laughs> girl, I love Bria to pieces. I see why I see why person was cussing her ass out the other day. Yeah. Bria be doing so much sometimes and she thinks she's scaring somebody. Um, if I can express myself, yeah. Anyways, girl. Jasmine starts crying. They don't know Jasmine pregnant. Jasmine pregnant. <laughs> Jasmine pregnant. That's why she really cries. Jasmine pregnant, girl. Her man done, her man got deployed. She about to probably have to have this baby while her man is still wherever he at. Um, she really don't know where she stands with the group. And now y'all telling me that my one friend who really is my friend can't even come? Girl, bye. That's why Jasmine is upset. Anyways, that's the episode. Is that all I got? Yeah, that's pretty much it, child. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I love Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Anyways, I'm gone, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.